you all know that Todd had asked me to speak, and when he asked me originally in the past, he's asked me, and I've always said no. Because <laughs> this is not my thing. This is Todd, and this is April's thing, and they are dynamic speakers, and that is just not what I feel I'm called to do. But when he asked me this time, I did think we do feel more like a family now when he preaches on the family and the household of faith. Yes, and it does make me feel like even if I'm a little bit nervous, this is my family. So it's okay. <laughs> I know that it'll all be okay because y'all are my brothers and sisters in Christ and my moms <laughs> in Christ. <laughs> so um, we all remember the exercise Todd had done a while back when we had to come up with one word purpose. My one word, and I think we've all learned from the slides and everything, is acceptance and Todd's talked about. And I do have the website that I created, The Art of Acceptance. And it's funny, when I told Elijah that my word was acceptance, he did the typical teen thing, and he kind of rolled his eyes and said, oh, God. And he said, of course it is. I could have told you that. <laughs> because my children, if anybody knows how I feel about accepting other people and not judging a book by its cover, is my kids. Because they like to play jokes, and they joke around about certain things, talking about each other's appearances, and even sometimes other people's in a joking manner, but it gets under my skin. It's like a pet peeve for me. For some reason, I know they're just playing and they're not being mean-spirited, but it's still one of those things that it's just a pet peeve for me just because somebody's different. But I also want to make sure when I'm talking about acceptance that I'm not only talking about what it is, but what it's not, as well as for other people and for yourself. So let's talk about what is acceptance, because it does have several definitions. And if you look in the Webster's Dictionary, I'm just going to go over a couple of these. The action to consent to or undertake something offered. And I always joke, you know, if you offer me a Reese cup, my mouth will accept the Reese cup. <laughs> it will accept it gratefully. <laughs> and... The other one is the action or process of being received as adequate or suitable, typically to be admitted into a group. So you can look at this as athletics, trying out for the soccer team or basketball team, and you are found adequate to participate in that sport. Your skills are adequate. You can also look at this as when you're building friendships. When you're The whole thing about building friendships is you find someone else that is suitable to you, to your personality, and vice versa. That's how you build a, a solid friendship. You might have to look past certain things, but you're suitable to hang around one another. Right. Okay. It's also a willingness to tolerate a difficult or unpleasant situation. And I know tolerance sometimes gets kind of a negative aspect to it because sometimes it's used very liberally. Like you just have to tolerate everything. Well, that's not what acceptance is talking about. It's talking about a willingness to tolerate a difficult or unpleasant situation. So maybe in your marriage, you might be in a bad place, but you're willing to tolerate that because you know you're trying to work through it. Or in your workplace, you might be in a difficult situation, but you're willing to tolerate that because you know it's just a season. Right. Agreement with or belief in an idea, opinion, or explanation. We are all here together because we've all accepted the belief in Jesus Christ. This is something we all agree in. It's a belief system we agree on. Therefore, we have accepted it. Now, the definition of agreement is harmony or accordance in opinion or feeling or position, consistency. So we've talked about what acceptance is. Let's talk about what it's not real quick. It's not always agreeing. You're not always going to be in harmony with somebody's belief system. You're just not. And that's okay. <laughs> Right. It's also not always tolerating. You're not always going to tolerate somebody cussing you out. No. You're not always going to tolerate somebody's lifestyle that you're not just going to sit there and willingly tolerate it. Now, I also want to be clear. I know as Christians, we've probably heard this a lot. Love the sinner, hate the sin. That's what acceptance is. It's accepting the person, maybe not their ideas, or their belief system, or their lifestyle. We've got to learn how to separate those two things. So when I'm talking about the art of acceptance, art is a skill at doing a specific thing 
typically acquired through practice. So we have to practice accepting people that are different from us. Yes, ma'am. We have to make a conscious choice that even though that person might have tattoos and piercings, they might wear their clothes a little different, different race, different accents, different hair. It, they might not be our cup of tea in the way they appear. We might not wear that outfit. But it doesn't mean that their heart isn't pure in their belief system with Christ. So we have to learn how to look past the outer. First Samuel, it reminds me in First Samuel, it actually says that God doesn't look at the outward like people do. He looks at the heart. So even the Bible said knows, Jesus knows, we look at the outer. So we have to practice not doing that because it's just in us to make that quick judgment. Somebody, you know, you see this young kid with his pants hanging low. Okay, I'm not going to wear my breeches like that, but that doesn't mean he's not a good kid. Okay, it just might be what right now he likes. I don't like it, but he might. And it doesn't mean his heart isn't pure. So Amen. we have to get past the baggy bridges. Yes, ma'am. And also, when I'm talking about loving yourself or accepting yourself, it's not an excuse. It's not something to hide back behind either. So if you know that there's something that keeps you away from God, it's not something that just says, oh, well, I accept this about myself. Therefore, Jesus, no, you can still work on it. You can still change it. So I can sit here and say, you know, I've accepted that I'm a little overweight. Okay, what that does is I've accepted it so it doesn't stop me from living my life. It's not how I define myself. And it's not going to uh, cause me to stop doing things. But at the same time, I can change that and That's try right. to lose weight. So there's a difference in you can accept where you are, but know you still need to change. And know you still need to grow. Especially when it's something that's keeping you from God or your health or in a relationship. Now, enough about what Joy thinks. Let's talk about the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Let's see what the Bible actually says about acceptance because it is in there. If you look in Ephesians 4, verses 2 through 3, and I'm reading out of the English Standard Version today. Philip's just shaking his head in disgust. <laughs> But in Ephesians 4, verses 2 through 3, it says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. These two scriptures really speak to me because we as believers should show our humility and gentleness and patience when we actually accept each other. When we accept each other's flaws and faults, we're bearing with one another in love. And that's how you maintain unity and peace. I think Philip and I have these discussions all the time. The church is just so divided sometimes on, in my opinion, some of the stupidest things. But yet it causes division. Well, what that is is somebody somewhere has some pride because they can't accept that there's another point of view. And we're not even talking kingdom issues here. We're talking... <laughs> hey, women shouldn't be speaking. I shouldn't be doing this right now, okay, according to some. And that's fine. That's their belief. I don't hate them. I don't despise them. But at the same time, they might not accept that we do allow this. So sometimes that's just pride. So if you can humble yourself and show that humility and just be gentle and patient with one another, bear with one another, that's how you have unity in the church. So sometimes you have to let go of the pride. Amen. In Romans 2.11, it states, For God shows no partiality. Now, this is a tiny scripture that packs a really big punch. God shows no partiality, and yet we think we can. Mm. I mean, who are we? Who are we to think that we can sit here and judge the tattoos, the piercings, the hairstyles, the clothes, when God's not showing partiality. And us, as Christians, what we're always striving to do is be more like Christ. I mean, yeah. I, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. And that should be, that's the common goal. We're all trying to be more like Christ. God shows no partiality. Todd even talks about how we're all sons and daughters of the king. All of us. All of us in this room are all sons and daughters of the king. 
And you can look back through, just to take it off a little bit, but back through cultures, women have been treated like property and cattle. And yet we are all sons and daughters of the king. Wow. In God's eyes, we're all equal. Todd has said that. Todd said it. I'm Joy's not saying it. <laughs> the Bible says it more importantly. The Amen. Bible says That's right. it. In God's eyes, there's there's no gender. So why are we the ones that decide that we can discriminate based on gender? And again, even more importantly, just based on outer appearance in general. In Romans 15, 7, it states, Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. As Christ has welcomed you. So think about that. We're to bear one another. We're to not show any partiality. And we are to welcome one another. That's all about accepting each other. You're accepting one another no matter their faults or what you deem as faults. You're accepting one another. You're bearing with one another no matter their dress, their outer appearance, their personalities. And you're not showing partiality. Rich or poor, I, I believe everybody in this room, we treat everybody the same, whether you have money or you don't have money. That's right. I mean, I, I think we do pretty good in that area, but some people, they can, they look down their nose if you don't have enough money or meet their standards. But we might not do that with the rich or the poor, but think about ways you might. You might see some young kid with baggy pants and have that snap judgment. Now, Philip likes to call it profiling. <laughs> and there are some things that you can look at certain people and just kind of know what their belief system might be. But you shouldn't cause that to cause separation from actually getting to know the person and really find that out. Amen. Find out and get to know their hearts. And all of this goes for others, but it also goes for yourself. Because God didn't create any accidents. You have a purpose. <laughs> You're worthy of God's love. I remember in Psalm, and we all hear about it all the time, but in Psalm it talks about we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We need to remember that. And it also talks about in Matthew that there's more value. You have more value than many sparrows. And then in 2 Corinthians, I really like this one, and again, I'm probably speaking mainly to women with this part, but I'm sure men do it too. But in 2 Corinthians, it talks about that we should not measure or compare ourselves among ourselves. It isn't wise. So it's not wise to compare ourselves to one another. When Todd asked me to do this, I could have easily said no because I would automatically compare myself to him. Okay, I'm not Todd. Okay, or I may, he asked me to sing as well. I may compare myself to April. I'm not April. Okay, I'm joy. And we shouldn't let those comparisons cause us to devalue Amen. ourselves yes. or to devalue yes. what we do bring the, to the table. Because you know what? I'm not Todd. I'm not able. I'm joy. So I do bring something else to the table. It's not going to be a 40 minute sermon. <laughs> and we may still, they may still be serving breakfast when we're done. But I have something to offer, right? You like that, don't you? Oh, no. <laughs> we like the <them> waffles. <laughs> but we do, we have a tendency to compare ourselves to one another, and it ends up hindering you. It ends up causing you to think things about yourself. I mean, I'm sure I'm never going to be tall. So why do I constantly look at other women and wish I were five foot seven? Okay, that's not something I can change about myself. Okay, so it doesn't bring me less value that I'm five foot two. <laughs> they say five foot one. But we need to learn to love ourselves as Christ loves us, just like we're learning to love others as Christ loves them. And all of that is just learning to accept everybody where they are, where they're going, no matter what they look like on the outside. Like I mentioned in First Samuel. It talks about God does not look at the outward like people do. He looks at the inner. And we need to really practice looking at the inner more than the outward. And that will help you separate the person from their lifestyle or their belief. 
And we need to learn to accept the person, no matter their lifestyle or belief. Or else you're not going to be able to reach those people. Amen. Because you, if you already deem them not good enough, and you're not going to talk to them or whatever, it already causes that wall to where they're not going to listen to you. Right. And that's not what we want. By accepting people, you can share God's love, share the word with them, no matter where they are in their life. 